Greetings, fellow Triumph the Insult comic dogs. Tiki here. And Blue Dragon 5. And we're back with yet another Curb Your Enthusiasm recap. It's The Colostomy Bag, Season 12, Episode 8. Oh yeah, we're really gearing up now, boy. Only two episodes left. All right, so Dragon, I think my thoughts on this episode are pretty simple. Um, honestly, I thought it was a little bit of a slow burn. Like, I was enjoying it. But I thought, like, you know what? This is it's fine. Uh, not Maybe not quite as good as, like, some of the past highlight episodes that we've had this season. But then the third act of this episode came up. And I legitimately think some of the payoffs in this episode are some of the best of the season. So overall, I ended up quite liking it. I thought, you know, I honestly, I thought the title, the, the stuff with the title was a little bit, I'm just not crazy about that subject matter in general, like gross medical stuff kind of, kind of weirds me out a little bit. So I wasn't crazy that that was, uh, that was like one of the main things we were focusing on everything else. And honestly, even with the title, we get Buscemi out of it, which I'll take. So you know, overall pretty solid, um, but like I said, very, very strong payoffs this episode. I thought that was definitely where the episode really shined, was the payoffs. Yeah, I was uh, I was really feeling this one. I, uh, I'm kind of with you on the title, but I, you know, I, you know, with my fear of medical things, you know, the uh-huh. last me bag is nightmare inducing, so I don't know how to <laughs> spend, uh, you know. But uh, I mean, I, I kind of get why they and I kind of get why they went with the title, just given the last gag and what it's in relation to. So that kind of makes sense. I really, if, if I were given a choice, I would probably call it the, the, the toss. The toss, yeah, yeah, I could see that, yeah. You know, that's what I would call it. But uh, uh-huh. still, this, uh, you know, this is I thought it was a very solid episode. We are still gearing up for a for a trial finale. It seems. Oh, it's definitely going to be a trial finale. Yeah, and things <laughs> just Larry David just keeps. Digging deeper and deeper this hole that he's in, and it, it's just it's gonna blow up spectacularly. And I have no idea <laughs> just how he's like how it could get worse for him, but you know it will, right? Right, exactly. And I don't know this one, this one I feel uh, it very much feels like curves back in a groove right now, you know, it's like they're in their groove, they're they're in that familiar niche, you know, things are uh, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling good about the season. Yeah, I am too. I am too, for sure. All right, we got Code Geass in the comments. Um, he's saying Conan O'Brien looks like Brian Cranston. In the he, he's, he's out of his mind. Code Geass is out of his mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, Code Geass. I don't know what to tell you. He is. There's no way. That does not remotely look like Brian Cranston. I, 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 did, I honestly don't really know where he's getting that from either. But <laughs> I mean, does Brian Cranston like Dalmatians? Is that it? Like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, this is a more astute observation. He's saying, uh, is it just me or is Larry David the character, not the actor, an early example of a Karen? A lot of the show's episodes involve him having I need to see the manager vibes. <laughs> I mean, yes and no. I would say, yeah, it is like I need to see the manager vibes for sure. But only but if I the can- manager instigated it, though. <laughs> right, right. I feel like Larry David is like like a justified Karen essentially is like kind of the premise of the show. <laughs> he's not a Karen, he's a Larry. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, uh Gogias says for a moment I really thought it was Brian Cranston. I One I, fact, I, I, I'll I'll meet you in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna meet you in the middle here. Okay, Cranston was actually on a season of Curb. Not this episode, but he was on the show. There you go. There you go. All right. Okay, anything else we need to go over? Should we just uh, kick things uh, off? Well, I mean, unless you saw something in the promo, I didn't. I mean, for all we know. Uh, I, at this point, he's popped up so many times, I hate saying it. But hey, if I say it, you mean we get a little bit more of it? You know what? I, at this I, point, I really, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I really don't know if we're done with him yet with Richard Lewis, I'm assuming you're talking about. Yeah, that's the thing, man. I got to be honest. It really feels like. Just given the frequency at which he's popped up this season, uh, it does feel like Larry David might have seen that, yeah, he was maybe on his last legs. So we got him as much in the season as he could. 
I mean, honestly, given how much he has popped up in the season, I would be kind of surprised if he wasn't anywhere in the last episode. That's what I'm saying. Like, Callie, I, I want to say this is like the last of it. By the same token, it's like, well, if he's shown up this far, I mean, you'd imagine he might have like a quick cameo in the last episode. Right, right. And you got to remember, like, these episodes aren't necessarily shot in order either, so. But that is also true, so you never know. Uh-huh. Imagine if Conan O'Brien played Walter. Okay, fun fact. We didn't see Conan do it, but we did see uh, Jimmy Fallon do it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Joking Bad. He did this. Jimmy Fallon did this little, little short called Joking Bad, like a little skit. And, uh, I, I would played. just love to see Conan act more just in general, honestly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so yeah, I, I do love the uh, the opening to this episode. It's, it feels very classic Curb, doesn't it? Just Larry David in a good mood. Never, really, <laughs> you know, he's he's literally singing. He's tossing the keys. It's a big. It, it'd be it's the biggest toss that he does. So it's, it's, the, most, it's the most bon vivant kind of jovial, like it's those it's Oscar Schindler kind of kind of entrance. Right, and, right. And, and, uh, and you know he's just, he's doing the toss, but it's like a well received toss. But he didn't ask first this time. It's like the one time he didn't ask first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, he's he, he's getting eyeballed by. He's in civilian clothes. So he's he's getting eyeballed by Victor. We're gonna talk about Victor a lot later. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so uh, the valet, you know, he tosses keys to the valet, which again could be seen as fun or deadly. This case. As most often shown in this episode, fun. Everyone likes the free toss. It's fun. As long as you know what's coming, it's a fun, it's a fun little like, hey, we're we're in sync. We're doing like we're playing a game of catch in everyday day-to-day -day life, you know? Right, right. <laughs> anyway, so uh, all of this. And better better thing, if they like the toss, Larry David tips generously. All right, so we got the trial going on, or at least the uh, the, the, mock the mock trial. trial. So we have the mock trial. The idea is Mantle set this up knowing, I, I think smartly knowing, well, in general, lawyers like to do mock trials, but especially if a client like uh, like a Larry David. Uh, you I mean, let's wanna... face it, Dragon, like with how poorly this mock trial went, Larry doesn't stand a chance, man. He's oh, fucked. God, no. He's yes. fucked. Now, in real life, Larry this, uh, David. This season is going to end with Larry David in prison. I I, I would be surprised if that was I mean, that's the thing, though. We're, we're very much, like, kind of hammering that in. Like, do you think it's just going to be that callable? Do you think he's actually the skin of his teeth? I, I don't know. You know what? Like, because like, you're right. It is – they are gearing up for it to be kind of a very predictable sort of outcome. So plus, I don't if know, he ends up in jail, that's essentially doing the Seinfeld finale again. So I don't know if he wants to do that. <laughs> I mean, I, my logic has always been ever since the uh, plot line first got introduced that he maybe wants to kind of, uh, you know, redeem the Seinfeld finale in a way. Yeah, so, so I don't know. That's the thing. I, I don't know how it's going to go. But here's the in real life, Larry David probably would. Here's the, I love the way he started the mock trial, just explaining very initially, very calmly. <laughs> it's yes, I gave, David, like... I gave an old woman, uh, you know, I gave a lady uh, who was standing in line voting some water. And he, if he just let it, I feel like in real life, Larry David would say that, and I think it would convey exactly what he needs to convey how ridiculous this is. But then, you know, let me go a little, you know. Oh kind no, of... the crime, the crime, how awful. Yep, he mocks it. He mocks Honestly, it. Mock in real trial. life, I think Larry David could probably get away with like a little bit of this kind of mockery because it is kind of part of his, you know, it's part of his flavor. It's part of his persona. A little bit. But I, mean, I think he pushes it. Even in this moment, he pushes it a little. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, as I'm saying, that's the difference, though. Real life Larry David is very much like Larry David, only not as vocal with all the opinions, but they're there. The opinions are, are true. It's just the voice <laughs> right, that's, right. that's the difference. Uh huh. Anyway, so yeah, he's he's you know he's kind of making fun of how ridiculous he's getting sidetracked. This is just Mantle's worst nightmare. This is not going well, and uh, he's getting eyed by by Victor the valet. We we, we learn later Victor the valet guy who is who's just uh, you know he's not liking Larry David. All seeing him as very insincere. He's seeing him as a tosser, and he does. Uh, I think Larry David's now. Here's the thing: Do you think Larry David's absolutely right that this guy is poisoning the jury pool? Do you think he did that himself? Because we do. Read I honestly there. think he's looking way too much into it. I, I don't. I don't even think the guy really, really gave much of an effort to do anything one way or another. I. Can we I have think like if, anything, if anything else, for me, the way I read it was that the guy just kind of like filed it in the back of my head, like, like kind of like a Victor will remember this sort of thing, oh, yeah. you know. 
That's kind of how I remember it. I, 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 I think based on like the votes and everything we had later, like we read like the like what they wrote in like the little ballots that they su select submitted when they were. Uh, I mean, let's be know. honest. Larry was not doing a great job, just generally speaking. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm I'm thinking it was uh, no, no. I, I think it was just he was doing such a bad job, and I, but I think I don't think he like influenced the jury, but I think he was yet another example of yeah, someone Larry Davis ticked off. I mean, more right, right, so. right, yeah. <laughs> Which there is a risk if Larry David offends one juror, he's done for. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> that's, that's that's not good. He's 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 in trouble there. So again, just this ab absurd trial. Just Larry's not not taking it seriously. It's the fact that he doesn't respect the law that got broken is the main reason this is just not going to work for him. Yeah, and I mean, it's kind of a tricky balance because I, like I said, I do think there is some validity in him, kind of like you know, holding a micro, you know, holding a, a holding a microscope. That's the word I was looking for. I'm sorry. Holding a microscope up to, uh, you know, how absurd the law actually is. I do think there's some legal kind of value in that. But like you said, he just goes too far with it. I think holding a mirror is what you're looking holding for. Holding a mirror. Yeah, that's, that's probably right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so he's... Listen, he's not keeping the answer simple. Poor Mantle is dealing with this. Also, I love that we learned that he acquiesced to his, to his husband. So the kid's going to be named Zeckelman. That's how he was able to get back <laughs> in the house and everything. And just, oh, just that poor, that poor lawyer. Again, Sean Hayes doing a great job, by the way. Uh huh. All right, let's see. So here, here's the thing with Victor. Is so Victor. What Victor doesn't get is that you know, Larry David now, after this especially, when you get the sense ordinarily, Larry David, he's asking permission before the toss. And I love that, like, we see Larry go up to the valet afterwards, you know, kind of feeling like, hey, do you do you like the toss? Am I, am I overstepping there? Says, I really, hey, I really like the, like the, the valet's delivery here. It's like, I feel like he's a great customer service guy because even yeah. if he was annoyed by it, you would never know. But I mean, looking at that guy, he when that initial toss happened, he had the smile and everything. I don't think he was... I kind, Yeah, I kind of think he really didn't mind at all. That's how I read it, yeah. That's what I think Larry, what Larry's doing... Oh, I, I'm sure we'll get into this, but when we talk about Victor, I definitely think that with Victor, there's kind of like, you know, an issue of like maybe Victor is not a fan of it, but he can't, you know, it's kind of not in his place to fucking speak for everyone. Well, abso you know? Absolutely, like he's 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 making you know, he's he's like a moral arbiter of of, of, of key tossing this game. <laughs> in a way. Victor is kind of like his own like valet version of Curb Your Enthusiasm. A little bit, Larry you know, David. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like Larry is doing the absolute right thing here. He asks first, like, "Hey, toss." And they, yeah, they, they, they toss. That's all I need to do. <laughs> right, right. He's had a, they, they, there's been a good experience here. Larry tips generously. That's how it goes. Uh huh. All right. Anyway, so uh, what's going on, with Jeff? Jeff. Okay. Oh man, this plot line. I, I think this plot line is the best of the episode, especially yeah. the payoff to it. <laughs> it's kind of like ingrained in the in the in the whole thing of the series, where Jeff and Susie always run very hot, very cold, usually cold. And, oh. <laughs> and uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff's in, in a bind here. So Jeff is about to get back surgery. Yes. Which means he's going under anesthetic and everything. There's always like anesthesia. And there's always a, always a risk there. So. Um, He's in, in justifiable fear that like, if Susie has power of attorney <laughs> and uh, if tongue goes south and he is uh, being kept alive mechanically, if that I'm just if I'm that, just picturing Susie just being like, you know what? Fuck him. No, absolutely. I absolutely <laughs> do. don't you? Yes. <laughs> one argument, she's always always at the wall. Right, right. that woman. You know, she has her nice moments, but you you step on one egg. You know what? And that's one of the reasons I do think this episode works as well as it does. Is that she does have some genuinely really good nice moments with Larry. They're few yeah. and far between, but they're there. That's the thing. Otherwise, she'd be completely you know like she'd be like the, <laughs> she'd be like the Ember and Star Wars practically. You know, right, right. But but yeah, so um. Seriously, before we get to Susan, I, I do love that Jeff, in this moment, again, I love that despite the, the comedy that we have here, there is like an underlining sincerity and real genuine friendship between Jeff and Larry here where he's like, it's actually a really sweet gesture of, hey, can you be my power of attorney? Again, it's for all the wrong reasons, but still, it's <laughs> like, uh, it's a nice moment between them. And just, it, it's so honest to their friendship here where it's like, hey, 
I, I, w I trust I put my life in your hands. And uh, I guess beyond that, it's the whole thing of like, I don't expect you to visit me. Like that, that's, they get each other. You know, the whole thing of like, no, you don't have to check on me. You can just call and just see if anything's happened. Like I, I, I'm asleep. I'm not going to care. I'm not going to give a crap. Right, right. So that whole thing. like that's, Whereas that's, like if it was Susie, Susie would be like, what the fuck? You didn't even come to visit Larry? <laughs> exactly. So this the fact that Jeff and Larry get each other. Honestly, they're the most. If, depending on how you look at, it, obviously we have Leon. But on the flip side of Leon, <sighs> Jeff and Larry. There, there's a kind of a light life. Leon episode. Honestly, he shows up though. He pops up, but I'm just saying he's had some real standouts this season. So <laughs> well, we got we got to rest our star player, Tiki. Come on. I know. Man. I know. <laughs> You know, he, if he reaches for like that that bag of chips and his hand cramps, we're all done. The episode's over. Oh my God. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So Susie, she is here's the thing. So Susie mentions the danger of the toss, and then since this, she reestablishes the stakes of the season. Like Larry, you lose that trial, you're going to Atlanta in the South. You're going to jail in the South. They'll put you on a chain gang. <laughs> yeah, so again, so Susie does care here, and she's uh -huh. giving some genuine advice, but then also reestablishing the stakes. Yep. Susie does something bad in this episode, though, with cheese, and we'll get there. Oh, we will get. I, I honestly think that cheese thing might be one of the most justifiable, like Larry getting upset things that we absolutely. Had oh, I can't. Wait. <laughs> All right, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll build to it. So, wait, 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 <laughs> comment here. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have sorry, folks. Kokia says, "Why does Jeff stay with Susie?" Um, they have a kid together. Have we ever seen the kid? Oh, God. well, that thing earlier in the series, take even now. Okay, yeah, because that's the yeah. thing. It's like I keep hearing about Sammy, but I don't yeah. think I've ever actually seen an episode with Sammy physically present. Oh, yeah. well, that's a th well. Did they, they switch genders too? No, no, no. They didn't, no, it's always been a girl. Okay, okay. Those been, interestingly, though, maybe, maybe I'm thinking like maybe in the beginning when they were developing the show, they were intending it to be a boy. I don't know. I well, thought I heard about that on the podcast. Well, well no, you, on the podcast, there was a mention that they, I forget if it was in the pilot of the first episode, they mentioned that, you know, Jeff Jeff had kids. So they basically, that, that they, it, in the series of Curb, particularly season three, which is one of my favorite seasons, even then, they did, there are a few goofs in Curb. Uh, particularly, um, one of my favorite episodes, Curb Enthusiasm, mentions that Susie's pregnant. We just completely forgot about it. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, jeez. Like, completely. It was, it was a big plot point in that episode. I'm, I'm not oh. saying it was like, a casual thing to mention. I'm saying it was a thing of, like the cat's out of the bag sort of, sort of plot line. And only one episode, and we never mention again, Susie is, not, is, is no longer pregnant. And we don't, I mean, something happens to her in that episode, unless it's like really dark and we just don't talk oh, about no. it. Oh, no. Oh, no. I mean, look, if you look what happens in that episode, it is possible. Uh -huh. but they don't They don't say it. I mean, the fact is she, you know, she's okay at the end of what happens, but they don't oh, mention man. the last thing down. If it's possible, <laughs> was pregnant, not anymore. Right, right. It's possible. I never thought of it that way, but that's the only way that makes sense, sadly. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a, it's a writing goof. Uh huh. Anyway, uh, point being, yeah, I mean, they, they have a kid together, but again, why are they still together? It's, honestly, I think just Jeff's afraid to leave her. <laughs> Low key, yeah. No, I seriously, I just think like he just he he he's cheated on her before. He doesn't really want it. He's right, like, right, he's yeah. <laughs> I mean, he mainly stuck around for the kid, but now the kid's grown up and just you know, the Susie will not let him leave her. And uh, and Garland and Susie Essman, correct me if I'm wrong, they're not together in real life, right? They're just oh god, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's yeah. The thing. I don't know. Right. I think I think uh, Susie Essman is married in real life. Jeff okay. is, is he's dating, but he had an ex wife, so he was married to somebody gotcha. else. But now I think. He's like on the market. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, ladies. Get Speaking of someone who's on the market, Dragon. Yes. <laughs> Richard Lewis, he's on the market for a new car. Well, not that new. <laughs> he's on the market for both, technically, but yes. Technically, yes, you're not wrong. Yeah. He's, he's always looking for his, it's always Richard Lewis as a girlfriend. That's always like the wrong <laughs> I love how Larry calls out, we'll get to it, but I love how he calls out the whole thing of, like, how could you, at your advanced age, keep on referring to phrases such as the one? Exactly. <laughs> uh, and you so gotta funny. admit, it is really charming to see Richard Lewis, like, you know, still going for it, you know, even, obviously, posthumously. 
T, you gotta remember Richard Lewis. He had game. Oh, uh-huh. so he was the bad boy comedian. Well, not bad boy in like the bad boy sense, but he was like he was like the dark moody, like he in the dark humor. He was like Mister Dark Humor. He always wore black on stage. Again, he had kind of like a Lenny Bruce kind of kind of swagger. To him. Right, right. Yeah, you've made that comparison before. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, mind you, again, he was also kind of dangerous because of all the drugs and stuff. But you know, it was like, yeah, he was well, not dangerous. Dang- you know, I mean, he was very much he was going through stuff. People could tell that. And, you know, ladies sometimes are attracted to the bad boy by proxy. Richard Lewis. God. <laughs> you know, he's funny. He looks kind of cool. He's been in movies such as Robin Hood Men and Tights. Uh-huh. Anyway. So, but yes, yeah, so Richard Lewis, uh, he is buying, uh, he's buying an old uh, Mercedes from the 70s. I think it's a 73 Mercedes, I think. Um, anyway, so he's buying a car, but the problem is Richard Lewis, uh, as we established here, I, this is probably, this is a guess, mind you, this is probably how they wrote him out of the one season. But they, I, I don't think they mentioned it during that season, but I think now, retro, like the whole Irma K- Kostrowski thing. Uh-huh. Um, we're probably saying Richard Lewis wasn't in that season because he got COVID. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Now, in real life, I don't remember if he, he had so many medical things. I don't know if. COVID was one of the many things that he had. It's probably, he was definitely susceptible to it. I don't know if he sure, had it. Sure, sure, yeah. The point being, we're saying he was taken out of the equation for a while because of that, and he said he has lasting damage, which means he can't really smell or taste that good, particularly smell. So that's why Larry David, Larry David is a surrogate nose. He's a surrogate <laughs> shit, here. Uh-huh. So he's basically taken him to, uh, to this guy who's selling the car. And Tiki, who is the guy selling the car? None other than Mr. Steve Buscemi. Yeah. What's that thing you used to say you really liked? The what? Kids, yo, they, you know, like the, the whole thing. Where he's oh, like, yeah, the, the, Saturday, the Saturday Night Live thing where he's like, hey, yo, fellow kids. There you go. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Uh, I do want to acknowledge Steve Buscemi. Um, he's kind of in that James Woods territory where it's like, you know, he's awesome as a character actor. Love him, but you know, politically speaking, he said some he said some very questionable things over the years. So yeah, but you know, also, it's that Steve Buscemi is you know in real life maybe not the most ideal guy in the world, but we still love him for his character stuff. Yeah, but I mean, like a volunteer firefighter during nine eleven, that yeah, earns him some points. I don't know. Was he a volunteer for that, yeah. that's cool. I didn't know that. That's what I'm saying. Like volunteer, I think he's still I forget okay, how well, look, Dragon, look, look. All I'm saying is that Rudy Giuliani literally saved New York City yeah. in 11. There you and go. He's that's still true. kind of a bad guy, right? That's like all, I guess <laughs> both I like things to be true. <laughs> hey, look, I flawed as the picture may be in life, I just want to highlight the good brush strokes. Okay, that's all Fair I want to highlight. Fair enough. You know. <laughs> Giuliani had a good speech in the 90s, was a pretty cool guy. <laughs> After oh, that, you know, it's life. <laughs> right, right. Boy, I be, I destroy Giuliani, dude. Any sort of credibility Giuliani had just died with Borat. It's so funny. It's so crazy to me. <laughs> but here's the thing. It's so crazy that Giuliani's both lifted by Seinfeld and then taken down a peg by curb. That's what the <laughs> Right. And he literally uses like you know with the hair dye thing too. So it's like, it wasn't just like like a one gag. He was like a bit. He built up that joke. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that's what that's what cracks me up. Anyway, and they went to a lot of trouble to get him into that Seinfeld episode because it was like they didn't know who's going to win the mayor the mayor mayoral election. All right. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so Steve Buscemi is playing DiCarlo here. Uh, DiCarlo is the guy selling the car. We have some, you know, some fun gags here. Like Richard Lewis can't do the head nod, like the whole, like, hey, let's let's, let's talk over here, like, like the sig. He can't do the signal head nod. Uh-huh. And then Larry David's in the car, and he has the big smell discovery. Oh yes, there is kind of a kind of a distinct tobacco smell in the car. Yeah, you know, basically, like the car has been smoked in since the seventies. <laughs> right, right. Which I'm sure is not pleasant. Uh huh. Would drive me crazy. Have you ever been to a hotel room that just has a very strong cigarette smell to it? No, I've been to places, not a hotel, but like I've, I've been to hotels, but not really the, those that kind of smell a lot uh-huh. like that. But I've been to places that smell like that, so I get like casinos you know, in general kind of have that odor to it. <laughs> oh yeah, well for yeah. sure. Well, that's yeah. especially. I mean, I forget now if we've completely rooted out the smoking in casinos, but there is like a smoking section. I don't think we have. I don't think we have. Well, that's the thing because there's like a smoking section of casinos. Right. Which, yeah. You know, at least going back to 04, it was definitely still in practice. So you know. Uh-huh. Anyway. Uh, the point being, though, car very much smells like that. So, uh, you know, Rich Lewis 
wants a smell discount. <laughs> wants the you know what I smell? I smell a scam. Yep. <laughs> I love that it does like initially look like you know, you, you it totally it. does. It totally does. Because <laughs> it does sound too ridiculous to buy. Okay, wait, so he can't smell, so we brought a friend who. Right, right, him. right. Yeah, it, it's one of those classic things where like Larry's trying to explain the situation, <laughs> but it's just, it sounds so unbelievable. But I love too that he's just, it's, it's also a valid, almost like an advocate still, you know, very vaudevillian sort of thing. Like, well, you can't smell anyway. Was it, what does it matter to you? What if I have people in the car? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, Which, so, I mean, uh, you know, like you said, knowing Richard Lewis, he is going to have women in the car, and that and that yeah. is going to be a problem. Yeah. So, what do you think? Do you uh, do you, do you think they should they should have gotten the smell discount? I think three thousand is a little steep for a smell yeah. discount, but easily like a thousand, knock a thousand off, I'll maybe fifteen hundred. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Did you get a discount for something other than the smell? I mean, we learned later, like, the seatbelt's broken. I think, you okay, know. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Like, the seatbelt and then the whole, like, oh, just just put your foot on the, oh, keep your foot on the, the gas way. when you're in a red light. Yeah. I'm like, that sounds horrible. Like, I, I honestly don't know how driving works enough to know, like, how that even works to have your foot on the gas while you're stopped. But that sounds fucking stressful as shit. Man. Oh, absolutely. That's, here's the, thing. <laughs> the car, the cars back in the day, they're made to last, and they will still like if you get into a car accident, like a seventies car, you'll be okay. Uh huh. Assuming you have airbags and everything, that's the one thing you might want to outfit, like make sure it's like proper airbags. They have airbags, but you know, I, I'm saying like the airbags they make now are really safe. Back then, it's just, it's just like it's like a. I keep going to the National Lampoon's Vacation when you look at like that. Really, you know, it's, it's very much like a. It's not like a it's not a, it's not a cushiony bag. It's like it's very much like in like a garbage bag. Right, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, but here here's the thing though. So they've got into a car accident between like a '70s car and like a car of today. The car of today is going to be like you know it's going to be crunch. It's going to be like a tin foil thing. It's like it's like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You remember that gag in Back to the Future too? Where uh, you know, like uh, Marty says, "Doc, why don't you just land? We'll we'll land on him." He's like, "No, that's like a, that's a '50s car. This is like an this is an '80s very is a very '80s fiberglass DeLorean. You know, this it will will be destroyed." Uh huh. So it's kind of like that that sort of thing. Anyway, so uh, the point being, they build them the last, and also maybe handy that they run on gas and not <laughs> right, right. <We'll> <laughs> Okay, so uh, anyway, so then we have uh, you know Larry David just kind of makes a uh, makes a joke. He's all he's selling this because you know life is kind of going down the toilet for him here, where you know he's like he, he's going through a divorce. It's getting on his nerves. That's why he wants to sell the car so the wife doesn't get it. And he says, "Well, it could be worse." He had a colostomy bag, and he gives him this look, <laughs> which I'm I'm inclined to agree. I think it was a calculated move here. I think you think it was, was? yeah, yeah. I I I actually kind of think that he's sort of like, oh, if you're gonna if you're gonna scam me, I'm gonna try and scam you. I think yeah, it's I mean, kind of that sort of thing. I don't think he has the end game of he's gonna buy a car out of guilt, but I think he has the. I think it's just like an in the moment thing of like I'm gonna make him feel bad. Right, right, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Anyway, let's see. So. We t so we mentioned so Larry David he drives by and he kind of spots he always has like, like a Bigfoot sighting with Conan. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yes. Now I think in real life, if memory serves, uh, two things about the Conan thing: why Conan's in this episode. Okay, okay. One, I think Conan in real life, at least I don't know how I, this might just be currently. I don't know if it's always been this way, but he does live really close to Larry David. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. Now, <laughs> secondly, and the main reason Conan's in this episode. And again, it might be linked with the first thing if it's a recent occurrence, but uh, the main thing is that Conan, uh, you know, he has like this podcast now. Larry David's been on his podcast and, you know, he's, uh, you know, Conan O'Brien like, needs a friend. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Good podcast. He's been, on, yeah, yeah. he's been on that one. I think Larry David in the past has maybe been on Conan before. So it's got, yeah, you know, Conan and Larry know each other very much, you know, different writers' rooms and stuff. So, you know, they, they've kind of known each other in passing and, and stuff. And then they've, you know, he's, he's gone on a show and stuff and talked about it. I'm sure Conan loves Seinfeld, stuff like that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't think Conan ever guest wrote an episode. So I don't think that occasionally, very rarely happened. Like Fred Stroller, for example. You know, I mean, Conan did write for The Simpsons. So that's why I, that's why I say that. I, it's possible. I don't think it did, but it is possible. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's entirely possible. All right. Anyway, so uh, this whole, this whole idea of, uh, Larry David sees Conan, but he didn't say anything. The reason he didn't say anything is that he needs 
clearance. You need clearance because oh Richard Lewis knows Conan. Uh huh. Larry David does not, at least intimately in this fictional setting. So he needs. So he's, this is one of those movies. verb codes I can actually like really agree with and get down with. Honestly, I I've been on the receiving end of this once, and is not. I, I've been in Larry David's exact shoes. Have you? Time. Yeah, it wasn't as awkward an exchange. The aftermath was. I mean, was Conan weird. really fucking like. I, I mean, the great thing is Conan really just sells it for just a painfully awkward experience. You know, that's what I'm saying. Things. Let me do this way. The aftermath I I incurred. From the lack of clearance, horrible. Oh no! Oh no! Utterly hard, like worst thing imaginable. You take <laughs> your, imagine your worst nightmare, then multiply it by tenfold. Ah, uh, very bad. Oh man, <laughs> terrible. Anyway, right? We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll build to it. Point being, though, uh, so he is asking for he's asking for a uh, Conan clearance, and uh, uh-huh. Richard says, "Yeah, yeah, sure," but he's kind of brushes it off, and uh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, I mean, do you want us to talk about all the Conan clearance stuff, or should we jump around? Uh, I mean, I honestly, I kind of rather we just kind of go. Like, I know that we jump around a little bit more in Curb than we do on other shows, but I'd still like to keep it a little bit on the chronological sure. side. Well, take take us to the next scene, then. Okay, let's see. I actually forget what the next scene. Is. Well, this is, why, this is why. I, I threw it. <laughs> Just, just, did we uh did we talk about the uh the cheese yet? Did we bring up? Well, the no, cheese? that's the thing. We can talk about the cheese now if you'd like. Because I think we passed the cheese technically. We talked about like we brought well, up I like Susie does cheese. a very bad thing, but yeah, I said well, I still I set up the cheese that you know. Okay, so Larry you did set it up. Were, You're right. You did. Larry, set it up. Larry, Larry, and Jeff were having lunch in which Jeff had the salad. And Larry, he got he went to like was it the cheese store? Is that what it's called? Uh, yes, the cheese shop of Beverly oh, Hills. Shop. Have you ever been there? <laughs> Which, Dragon, that must be the most amazing cheese shop in the fucking world. Tiggy, we don't go in. I have to assume that is actually the real place. because uh, I it would think so. Good. I would think so. But yeah, I mean, have you ever, uh, so you've, you've never like visited like this area at all. You've never been. No, not Beverly Hills. Hills. No, the only area of Hollywood I've actually visited is like the main stretch with the Chinese theater and everything. And then, you know, Universal Studios, but that's kind of its own thing. And it was a Larry dude. He brought, he got this block of uh, this fancy block of cheese and the, 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 the ends of the V, like the Vander, like the Volkswagen, the Vander something. It's definitely not Volkswagen, but I know, yes. I'm, I'm just trying. I'm trying to get there. Okay, I uh, don't know what the cheese, the Vanderschlag or something, like, the Vonder, it's the Vonder something. Oh, uh, the point being, fancy cheese. What about the dancing cheese? <laughs> anyway, so Larry's about to make a sandwich with this uh, with this cheese. Uh, anyway, so they're, they're having lunch and everything. So he uh, has to go. He asks Sue. He again. He Ask Susie permission. Says, hey, Susie, can I leave this cheese here for like uh, later today or tomorrow? She's like, oh, yeah, sure. She just says it very, 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 very nonchalantly. Just very says, much oh, like, yeah, yeah, sure, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> like, nothing wrong with that. Like, okay, cheese, you know, the cheese can stay here. It's just cheese. It's fine. Like, he hasn't uh-huh. anything to tick her off lately. All good there. That's fine. So he comes back. After uh, basically they come back. I said, so we should talk about what Larry and Jeff did. This, this then gets us to the cheese. So. Again, they, they go there, they sign the power of attorney. We got to talk about the pen. <laughs> yes, I love that callback. <laughs> so, again, it's like a callback to within the season here, the whole like use the I like it thing and to, uh, to get something. He says, I really like this pen. And the, Jeff's lawyer, just not, not really. Do like you think it. the lawyer like knows what Larry's trying to do and just is having none of it? Because that's kind of how I read it. <laughs> I liked it. Here's the thing. We don't know, but I like to think he absolutely knows what he's trying to do. Right, right. <laughs> he absolutely knows what he's trying to do there, and he just doesn't want to give him. Here's the thing: though. it's just the fact that yes, he knows what he's trying to do, but but by the same token, it really feels like I, it just it seems like such a petty small move. Like I know what he's doing, but I'm just, I'm not giving him the pen. I mean, it's a fucking pen. It's a pen. Like he literally says, we have a ton of them. See, that's, that's the thing, right? There, that's okay? what really bothers me about the Had... situation is that he literally says that we have a ton of them lying around. It's like, okay, then why don't you just give one up? See, had he not said that, I would have been kind of on his side. Had right, he not right, said yeah. Hey, I appreciate a good tiki. I do. I appreciate a good pen too. <laughs> I appreciate a quality pen. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm all about it. you. You have no idea how small I write. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm kind of the opposite problem, actually. 
Iggy, I mean, literally, my notes, uh, when, I, when I write my notes, I take a piece of paper and I fold it, so it's like in four sections. So I have, like, essentially, I have, like, four episodes of Curb on, like, four, oh my God. Like four sides. <laughs> That's my notes right now. I can write that small. Uh, okay? <laughs> it's in shorthand, mind you, but I can. Uh. <laughs> okay, the point being, again... I can appreciate a quality pen. This is like vaguely a fountain pen. I, I don't think it's necessarily a full-on fountain pen, but something kind of tantamount to that. And it's like he had like the cap and everything, but still, it's the fact that he won't he just give him the pen, man. <laughs> and later on, I mean, he, he makes a point to like go out of his way to take it away. <laughs> yep. And later on, there are three pens. <laughs> you know, it's just like on. Oh. Uh -huh. Anyway. So they get, they sign the they sign the document. They really don't want Susie to find out. Meanwhile, they they return. I, that was some fun, hilarious, casual, mundane conversation. Larry Dave has like two zippers on his shirt, and like Jeff's like, I don't I don't understand that. Yeah, I just have a like, zipper towards the top and towards the bottom. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm saying it's what he's saying. It's just a casual thing, like zipper on the top, zipper on the bottom. Oh, right, right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking me if that's... No, no, no. I, 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 I remember. It's, that, that's how it works. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, so so, uh, the, so Larry's there, and he's asking me uh, before he leaves, after they come up with the lie to cover what you know what happened there. He says, oh, yeah, can I get that cheese? Oh, it, it, it's gone. We ate it all. Okay, now here we go. So I think that... If he would have like come back like a week later for the cheese, yeah, I think it would have been fair game for them to eat it. But he didn't come back a week later. Based on the episode, it looks like by all intents and purposes, he came back the next day. Like it is because he said oh. tomorrow, like later right, today, right. Like tomorrow. So this is tomorrow. <laughs> it's only so by that day. account, Susie Green. And honestly, I'm very disappointed in Jeff. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Jeff is a culprit in this whole. Scenario. He's culpable. <laughs> he's, a, he's a conspirator. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know. It, look, here's you the thing. Made him thing. a melt. Who are you people? Now, here's the thing. Okay. Here's 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 my assessment of of the slight. Okay. Of the slice of slight here. <laughs> okay. Look. If possession is indeed nine tenths of the law, which I mean, yes, I think that is a bullshit line. I, I will say that much. It is the best line of the episode, though, where Larry David takes the pomegranate juice. It's nine tenths of the effing it's nine law. Nine tenths of the law. Of the <laughs> effing law. <laughs> anyway, um, so look, even if it's like a whole nine tenths of, of the law thing. It's just the fact that, look, if she used the cheese, that's one thing. But it's the fact that they used all. We saw the size. Like it's a, it's a, it's a big. Thing. You cannot fucking make one melt sandwich with that chunk of cheese, dude. Even that's too. way too much cheese. Here's the thing. Look, okay, even we're going like the, whole <laughs> pie, the pie physics of the last episode, okay? <laughs> right. fact, let's say in theory, okay, hypothetically, we make three sandwiches okay three big sandwiches even okay we make three reasonably sized sandwiches okay uh -huh. like sub rolls or what have you i don't know like a big a big bread like legit like 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 sub sandwich like hero like hoagie rolls yeah 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 but not like a foot long though but you know what i mean it's big sure it's, sure it's, yeah it's, it's, it's a big it's not it's not like a traditional like it's not sliced bread that's what that's my point so it's not like an average gotcha, sandwich, gotcha. yeah or something you know like something some fancy la bread <laughs> fancy LA bread. It's fancy LA bread. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You know, it's it's one percent or bread. Two percent <laughs> whole milk. We're talking one percent or bread. <laughs> right. Okay, so I the see fact you're is, drinking one percent. Is that because you think you're fat? Because you're <laughs> not. You could be drinking whole if you wanted to. Oh, by the way, did you ever see the uh, the, the the SNL thing Larry David did, uh, where he played uh, they did like a Curb Enthusiasm parody on SNL with uh, Bernie Sanders, where he played Bernie Sanders, but basically Bernie Sanders is Larry David. I mean, Bernie, like Larry David is Bernie Sanders is kind of perfect casting, honestly. But I'm saying they no, he was, every, <laughs> when they did their political stuff, they had him play Bernie Sanders, but they did like a whole short where 
It's called Burn Your Enthusiasm. Oh where they, have, they play the song. They I have, have not the SNL, seen it, but I will look it up. And they have the SNL players do impressions of Funkhauser, of uh, oh, Funkhauser. <laughs> of okay, Jeff I need Gar to see that. I need Bobby, to see that. Bobby Moynihan is Jeff Garland. You know, oh, Jeff man. Green. And they have, I forget, I forget the lady who, the one of the, the female player in SNL, she plays Susie Essen pretty well. Uh huh. Anyway. Yeah, I definitely need to check that out. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. There's like a whole, there's a 2% runner. It's really funny on that. Oh, one. man. But anyway. <laughs> okay, what was I? Uh, that was one of my favorite quotes from Napoleon Dynamite, by the way, the whole I, I see you're drinking 1% thing. <laughs> <laughs> You could be drinking whole if you wanted. That, that's Napoleon Dynamite's pickup line, right? <laughs> Is that because you think you're fat? <laughs> I buy that. By the way, folks, we will be doing a Napoleon Dynamite 20th anniversary retrospective this year. Make no mistake about that. I am yeah, excited. That was 04. I forgot about it. It was 04, one. yes. I was, reminded, I was reminded of that recently, the thing that you and I both saw. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. All right. It was very dark reasoning, but yeah. I, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's such a dark thing to say, oh, it's Napoleon. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I mean, it sucks for her, but hey, Napoleon. <laughs> right. Anywho, but yes, yeah, so the fact that three sandwiches, that big block, there's still going to be something left over. You know, it's like not, not, not to throw out. Uh -huh. Which, by the way, even so, think about this. Larry and Dave made a sandwich. And she, it looks like she just completely tossed that sandwich so Jeff couldn't eat it. Okay, you know what? I'm so glad you brought that up because that, to me, was, like, one of the other big, like, like, you know, like, what are you doing, Susie? Like, yeah, you're Larry literally made throwing sandwich. away a sandwich to make another sandwich with Larry's cheese. Just think, Larry made that, <laughs> that, he made that initial sandwich for himself, and they said, Jeff, you can have it. And then uh, she, just, she tossed it out of spite. Not even out of spite, just out of like, hey, you're eating the salad, you don't need this sandwich, I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> right, right. So to quote, to quote the great Gutierrez, uh, enough about the sandwich already. Oh <laughs> okay, anyway, so he takes the, the, the pomegranate juice, and I intend some the effing law. Uh-huh. Okay. So where do you want to go next? Right. Let's see. Next, I believe we have. Do we go to the law? Wait, no, we go back to Buscemi, right? I thought it was. I thought it was Conan Clarence, but I could be. No. Oh no, you're right. It is Conan. It is Conan. You're right. You're right. Okay, so he sees Conan walking down the street. He thinks Richard Lewis has talked to him, so he goes out of his way, pulls over. <laughs> gets out. This is like if if I were in Larry David's shoes, I would be very cautious if Conan actually. You know what I mean? If he yeah. actually talked to talk to Richard or not. Be very paranoid about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why is he in a rush to talk to Conan? That's the real question. You know, Dragon, who would be in a rush to talk to Conan O'Brien? Yes, but Larry David, though, however. That's fair. That's fair. That's <laughs> ordinary. We all, we all, it's not we like all Larry David is, like, fanboying out, like, oh, I love that Conan! Triumph the insult comic dog is my uh, icon! Tiki... Uh, wasn't 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 Triumph uh, Robert Smigel though? No, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog was absolutely Conan. Well, no, I'm saying the, well, the voice dog... might have been. No, that's what I'm saying. The actual dog is Robert Smigel, but maybe Co like is Conan. He, he was on Conan show though. That's what. I'm There saying. you go. Okay, yeah. that's what I wanted. Okay. Yeah. When you open with like that, I did sure He was a fixture of Conan show. Here's the thing. I've seen Triumph's other... I never saw where Triumph originate. I've seen Triumph... He insult. absolutely originated on Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Well, I, now I know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That was why I was like raising an eyebrow. Wait a minute. He's talking, he's talking about Robert Smiley. <laughs> Smiley's like Triumph. We know he's Triumph. Right. right. <laughs> I'm not crazy. There's no way... Did, did, did Conan steal the dog? Oh, man. <laughs> It's like you did that Dalmatian, apparently, from a firehouse? No. <laughs> I do love that. Honestly, I think that the whole, like, Conan having a dog thing, I would like to think that is actually kind of a, a subtle nod to Triumph. I would like to think so. That would be funny if it was. <laughs> All right, let's see. So yeah, so yeah, uh, so Larry David basically ambushes Conan here. So did Richard Lewis talk to you? Like, no, I no, love no. how, like, just genuinely like upset conan is by this interaction <laughs> here's what's the here's the best part about all that though uh-huh okay 
while he is upset about it, he and Larry have great chemistry. And like they do, they goes, do. You're every right. Time he says Cole Lewis, that's him saying, "I kind of like hanging out with you, but we can't. This is a horrible way to do it." So just like call Lewis to get the clearance so we can actually have these these fun conversations. Like it feels like had he gotten clearance from Lewis in the show, you would have had thing like, "Hey, you know, Larry, I'm doing a podcast. You know, you want to <laughs> <laughs> right, right." <laughs> then, it would get, then it would get super meta because we've actually seen those podcast episodes. Oh man! <laughs> anyway, but uh, but yeah, so he's walking the Dalmatian and parents. Says, oh, nice fire, firehouse dog. No, you, no, he's not. Never been to a fire. You, you've stereotyped the dog. Can you stereotype a dog? That's the thing. Is it going? It's like I likes where the conversation's going. Uh huh. You know, my favorite part being the whole like, is like, you, you can ask him about Claire. It's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. He's like, you, you're not going to ask. Just, just you're not going to think about it. <laughs> And then I do like how Conan is, you're right, he is genuinely, like, impressed by Larry's observation. Like, yeah. you know what? That's a really good observation, Larry. <laughs> As I've said, he's just very, he's, he really does like him. That's what's fascinating. He likes him, but he just can't, can't get past the stupid social convention thing. Right, right. <laughs> And then the, the whole like whole thing about like fatty arbuckles, like fatty arbuckles, what are you, Margaret Dumont? Or like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. There's a system for a reason, Larry. Oh God. <laughs> anyway, also we should I should mention this too, like this so earlier when he when he signed the papers, he, he saw Victor in the parking garage. He's like, Yeah, I'm just gonna sign I'm gonna sign papers to kill my friend. I'm gonna toss you my keys and I will hand you your you you will toss me my keys and I will hand you a tip. Uh -huh. This thing is a good like it's a good way to stick to Victor, you know. <laughs> you want the money, I want the toss. Okay, let's see. Um, Kogias says that should be fun. Diedrich Bader's in the film. I'm not quite sure what he was referring to there. Do you know? Um, is, wait, is Diedrich Bader in the Bowling Dynamite? Oh, he might be. Let me. Yeah, I think. I think that. I think he is. Yeah, let me make sure. But yeah, yeah. I think so. See, every time I think of Diedrich Bader in the movie, I keep thinking of Office Space. I mean, who does he play in Napoleon Dynamite? Offhand, I'm not sure. I, I know. Hold on. Um, and then let's see. Kogias is also saying, um, sorry. Yeah, he's uh, in the point line, right? Diedrich Bader's in the point. Line. I, I love when Larry fanboyed over Martin Short because I would too. Do you remember that? Not an episode I've seen. Hmm. Um, you know, I do remember Martin Short popping up, but I, I'm blanking what happened. I think he did. I think it was a, he was he was he was having a good time. Martin Short, I forget exactly what happened though. Uh -huh. and Diedrich Bader plays Rex Quando in Napoleon Dynamite, the uh, the over the top Taekwondo instructor. Right. <laughs> yeah. God bless Diedrich Bader. Bow to your sensei! Bow to your sensei! <laughs> God, God bless that, man. I love Diedrich <laughs> Oh, seriously, that is one of those movies where I could just, like, the at a certain point, I had the whole thing fucking, like, memorized. Wait, you forgot to put in the crystals. <laughs> Anyways, for some reason, that was, my dad and I really gravitated to the crystal line. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, it was so it was so sad that we killed him off in that Shazam movie. <laughs> <laughs> God. Because there's we introduced him like, hey, did your Bader, and then later the yeah, yeah, yeah. Scene yeah. Of the movie's like, yeah, we killed him off. <laughs> like, man, we can't have nice things. Why can't we have nice things? How dare you kill a Batman in a movie? Come <laughs> on. All right. Anyways. All right. So. Then we go to be, then we go to uh, De Carlo's house. Uh -huh. <laughs> so basically, Larry like Dave you said, I definitely think that Buscemi here in the moment he is very much like, yeah, this sucker doesn't know what he's in for. I'm gonna fucking milk this for all I, for all it's worth. Yep. So Larry, <laughs> Dave, he, uh, you know, he basically uh, he found out he had stomach surgery. He doesn't know what for, but he he makes the leap. He makes the assumption that it was for the whole you know, uh -huh. colostomy bag, which again just. Nightmare inducing hell. Uh, yeah, I, I know it, bro. I know it. <laughs> God. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so Larry Dave basically out of guilt, uh, essentially. And again, they're having this conversation where you have to wonder how much of it is intentional, not intentional on his part, or is him not making the clarification on purpose. I like I said, I think the way I read it was that it was pretty clear that he was being not disclosing the whole story on purpose. 
Here's the thing. I think it was just like in that one instance, though, where I think this this is like it's just kind of luck. It's kind of falling into his lap from this point forward, though. That's what I think. I think it's uh -huh. just he's standing his ground. Like he feels bad about what he said. You know, maybe he's making that assumption. But beyond that, I don't know. I don't think. I think he would have milked it more if he deliberately won him to buy the car. Sure. Sure. Anyway, so uh, basically, Larry David ends up buying the car out of, out of, out of guilt, uh, <laughs> only to discover one there's no seat belt you have like the faulty gas pedal and yeah i mean like i said that is like that is very heinous for dragon my dad actually went through something where he bought a truck from a guy and then the truck just basically ended up being a total fucking lemon um and so i i know all about this world of like buying used cars and the fucking owner not disclosing all the issues with it i have i, I have been there secondhand so, yeah, this whole thing with the seatbelt and the gas pedal thing, you know, only after the exchange has been made are you going to disclose shit like that. <laughs> yep. All right, let's see. Also, uh, we'll get to that later, I guess. But, uh, yeah, so Larry, the guy won't even Uber, like, so Larry's car is just stuck there. He won't even, like, you know, like, you know, help him, like, you know, drive the car back to his place. But that was one of my favorite interactions of the episode, honestly, was Larry's just like, huh, interesting. No, I don't feel like it. <laughs> of course, when he's saying interesting, you're thinking of that Seth Meyers. <laughs> Thing that Seth <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the whole thing. Like, that's a fake interest. You know, this is like, oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Honestly, it's not a fake interest. It's more of a Larry will remember this interesting. You, have you ever thought about trying that? What? No, I'm just saying, like, you know, someone gives you, you know, you say interesting to them. I have done that. Yes, yes. You have. You've given like the actual. Have you because of curb or just. No, not because of Curb, just in general. It's like a good kind of like blanket thing to say when you don't know what else to say. Have you tried saying it like him, though? Uh -huh. Either interesting or one of the one of the things that I kind of picked up from the movie Garden State, of all things, is, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, oh. definitely. <laughs> yeah, pick that one up from Garden State. <laughs> Anyways. Well, you did learn something. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's see. Where do we go from there? So uh, he gets into an argument with Richard Lewis, as he is wont to do. Uh, Richard Lewis thinks he stole his car. <laughs> but he explains the whole thing. You know, Leon is his cameo for the episode. Yep, yep. Anyway, so the whole like the whole car and clearance thing. Like, well, you can give me clearance. Like, I don't worry don't worry about the clearance. I want that car. I want I want the three thousand smell discount. <laughs> Anyway, then uh, so basically they sort as all right, fine, but just I love he's gonna acquiesce, which I fire you got you gotta take me to my car. Uh -huh. It was just like just, yeah, sure, babe. Hey, don't you babe me. Don't oh, babe yeah. me. <laughs> I know I heard it when I, I regretted saying it instantly. He's like, don't do <laughs> under any circumstances babe me. Okay, go Gios. He's saying, Do you think that Leon will get a spin-off show? Loki, that would not be a bad idea, especially because he already has like a pre-established cast of characters that they can draw from for his family. Okay, here's the thing: JB Smooth would love that. Okay, uh -huh. because he basically doesn't want Curb Ben. He's just he's kind of <laughs> but by the same token, come on, it's like there's no Leon can't get a spinoff. <laughs> Dragon, honestly, honestly, I I truly think that like. If young Sheldon's fucking sister can get a spinoff... Well, no, 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 it's not his brother, take his brother. Okay, whatever, if young Sheldon's brother, it's a spinoff of a spinoff, it's spinoff Scepter. And that's right? gonna crash and burn, alright? That's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's not an endorsement for why... Okay, look, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, meet the Blacks. That That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. If it weren't for the fact that we had Regina King, like, ready to go as a supporting player, I would be like, yeah, whatever. But no, it's like, Man, he's got like at least two really solid supporting players in that cast already, like like in the chamber. <laughs> All right. Anyways, All right. So uh, let's see. Um, also, Venmo gets shouted at a lot in this episode. People Venmoing each other. I dragon. I I have paranoia about Ven Venmo. Honestly, I I I like. I will use it if I have to, but 
if I can just pay the person and not have to use it, I will do that. Hey, that is hey, my... you, don't get, you don't have to justify anything to me. You don't have to use Venmo if you don't want to. No, I, I'm just saying, I you know, with, with everything being online, I just, I, ugh, I I have anxiety about, like, what if it doesn't go through, you know? It's just crazy. And I, and I'm out of the money in my bank account, and the person doesn't get their money either. Like, I, I have unreasonable paranoia that that scenario is going to go down. It's it's just so crazy to me. Honestly, like, Venmo is one thing. It's the fact that it's like, you Venmo, like, I'll, I'll Venmo you, like, the money for lunch or something. But it's just the fact that I'm going to Venmo you the, the, the money for this vehicle, for this car. Granted, these are, these are Hollywood celebrities. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> it's like they're going to buy a car like that and then the right, right. Of modern technology. Like, yeah, so I'm going to drive off with this car. You like, know what? Like, on yeah. that note, I actually think the one, one of the elements of the episode that I think would have been a little bit more realistic is if Buscemi would have just been playing himself. Yeah, but then the whole, the whole colostomy thing. Yeah, right? I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing. Some There's always a temptation where they always have to draw a line in the sand here where some people are actually themselves and others are characters. So they always, and then others, really like, like Jeff Green, are basically, like, essentially themselves, but not quite. Yeah, that's the thing. So it's, it's, it's funny when you look at it this way. Our Seinfeld actors are the Seinfeld actors. However... The support, like the character actors and the guest stars from Seinfeld, are different characters in Curb Enthusiasm. Oh God, Dragon! Did uh, did Brian Michael Richards ever pop up on Curb before the incident? Well, no, uh, well, no. That's what I'm saying. He played himself on Curb, Diggy. Okay, okay. Yeah, remember when they did the Seinfeld reunion? He, he was back. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. But here's Brian Cranston. Tim Watley from Seinfeld plays a different character. Plays a therapist. There we go. There we go. Uh, the book. The the book. Uh, sorry, not. I was going to say the book lawyer. No, he's not the book lawyer. The 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 the. the I guess the book detective. His name was Bookman, but I, I guess he was the library cop. That's what it was. Library cop. He, uh, oh. you know, he he played uh, Larry's doctor. Nice, nice. So that's what I'm saying. Like they kind of like kind of mix it up a little like that. Anywho, also Lori Lock, Lori Laughlin. But then again, this is what's crazy. Think about this though, okay? Lori Laughlin, she plays herself, and we call out via Ted Danson. Oh, she was on your show. So that's what I'm saying. Right, they broke right, the rule yeah. there. They, they kind of broke the universe with that joke, if you think about it. It's like, no, she was actually, she was essentially a guest star character actor, you know, who was, who's played, he's played a character on Seinfeld. What are those other guys? Like, Cranston doesn't exist in this universe. You know who really needs to pop up and curb? Jonathan Penner. Okay. The rickshaw guy. Yep. <laughs> this um, is the first day of the rest of my life. How many survivor guys do you want? <laughs> <laughs> we, I, mean, I, just a whole season. I just want a season where it's just Larry David getting cast on Survivor, and that's the whole season. Thank you. You get a whole episode about Survivor. What would I know satisfied? I know. It's like the most it's the most hilarious setup for a survivor joke you could ever have, and you're still not satiated. <laughs> you know, you're just you're just so corpulent, Tiki. Oh my god. god. Maybe Leon's spinoff can be about him getting on Survivor. All right. Well, that would actually be really funny. It's Leon on, it that would be, be really funny, the, actually. Tiki, that's the only thing on this earth that would make me watch Survivor. That oh, um, one of two things that would ever get me to watch Survivor, okay? One, if Leon were on it. Like not not JB Smooth, but just JB Smooth in character is Leon Black. Ideally, yes. <laughs> Ideally, yes. So there might be some wiggle room if it were just if it were just JB Smooth. Let's say Leon's the clincher. Oh come on! There's got to be at least a couple other people that you would watch it for if they were on. Come oh, on. Here, here's what. I, okay, here's the JB Smooth thing. can't be at the top of the pile in that list. The only other thing you give me a watch Survivor again is if. <laughs> If they're all like, trying to survive inside a small confined space, like I know, or an elevator, <laughs> a bathtub, something. But that's not the nature of the game anymore, anyways. But it could be. Okay, seriously. Besides JB Smooth, who would be like the ultimate celebrity that you would tune in if they were cast? Oh, because we're saying his name a lot, Cranston. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. <laughs> maybe okay, Tom Cavanaugh, maybe. Kavanaugh, yeah, probably, yeah. Probably Kavanaugh Kavanaugh. honestly is like, I mean, he's obviously famous, but I feel like he's low key famous enough that him being cast is like semi realistic. 
Yep. <laughs> anyway. No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's possible. Nate yeah, Romano yeah. is actually a big Survivor fan. It's been rumored for years that they were going to cast him. Hmm. Um, But, you know, we don't, we don't talk about him. No, no, <laughs> We're afraid. Of, <laughs> we're afraid. If Ray of Romano pops up in the finale, and we're forced to talk about him, of, uh, that, of that guy's wrath. Oh God! <laughs> hey, these guys are talking about. Oh, that's a terrible Ray Romano. He, he popped up in something we watched recently too. Did he? Yeah, the you know the the documentary. Did he? Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> eating a pickle. Uh huh. Oh God. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Oh. And it was an God. evil pickle too. Why? Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Now we, we have two things of pickles now, okay? We have we have the positive representation of the pickle via the Gondry view with kidding. And now we have the, the now darker prism to view the pickle from. And then there's just pickle Rick, which is just like the the embodiment of everything wrong with internet culture. <laughs> All right, fine. There's there's three pickles. <laughs> right, anyway. Morty! Flip me over, Morty! Fire! Yeah, it's gonna be huge! Morty! I'm, I'm stuck in a pickle! Oh my god! I don't Wait. know where enough it is! Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I just came up with a Larry David SNL sketch, alright? My glasses just came off! I'm a pickle! I can't pull Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's like, it, Larry David is playing a version of Rick Sanchez named Pickle Rick. But instead of actually being in a pickle, he, being a pickle, he's just in a pickle. Yep. <laughs> uh, Coke Geass, uh, we did a, was it a Halloween episode we covered? Yeah, it was the Halloween episode. Yeah, we covered a Halloween episode of uh, Everybody Loves Raymond way back in the day. This was years ago. This was like maybe at least like six, seven years ago, I want to say. And let's just say um, we didn't use any content from the actual show. All we use, you know, we have a thumbnail, much like the thumbnail that you see here that probably said, like, you know, Haunted Halloween Hygiene, Everybody Loves Raymond Recap Podcast. And that video got copyright striked so hard that it almost killed the channel. Like, I'm talking, like, I was going and trying to back up every single fucking video that we had on the channel in case our channel just disappeared because of it. It was that bad of a situation. Yep. And honestly, Dragon, I don't even know how we got out of that situation. I don't even remember. Uh, yeah, honestly, I don't know. I thought we just lucked out of it sometimes. I think we just did luck out, yeah. Anyways. No, I mean, we, were, we were counting. Like, it was a countdown of sorts. Like There was mm -hmm. an actual like legit countdown. It was scary. Right, right. And, yeah, you're right. Tokios, it is unacceptable. Yeah, you're right, Dragon. It was There was an actual, like, you are going, your channel will be terminated in X amount of days. And I'm like, right. oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, and the whole backup thing and everything it was a whole... So yeah, like I actually have a second channel that has that's just flooded with backups of stuff that we did on this channel. So, yep. anyways, okay. Anywho, so uh, Victor. Uh, so again, Larry. Uh, he he goes he goes back to see. I love this see. payoff. So well, first off, we have a big event that happens here for the season. Uh, Larry he goes to see Mantle. And uh, Mantle's basically telling him, you know, again, the mock trial didn't go well. Uh, he basically reads him all the verdicts and everything, which is basically, okay, you see, we have to make some adjustments here. <clears throat> Larry agrees, but then he, he brings up the two things. He brings up, he thinks the valet, Victor the valet guy, had a lot to do with it. So, again, he also brings up the cheese. <laughs> and I, I, the other line of the episode to me is Sean Hayes saying with the utmost is there, you, you have an issue with Keys and cheese. <laughs> that is a good line. Just <laughs> keys and cheese. Oh man. <laughs> anyway, so Larry is just he's, he's kind of fed up of him. You know what? Enough. With Larry, it's like I will say it is obviously reckless of him to fire Mantle on account of this. Obviously, yeah. it's reckless. Yes, but I gotta say, respect. Honestly, because it is ridiculous that Mantle is backing Susie in this equation. <laughs> well, I mean, T, that's a legal standpoint he has to take. Possession is nine tenths law. It's ridiculous, but 
but that's it, yeah. But I mean, like is. literally, he's he's defending Larry over a ridiculous law. He should know a thing or two about ridiculous laws. He should. He should. <laughs> to be fair, here. Uh, look, if we're gonna be really honest about Mantle, okay, Mantle seemingly good lawyer. However, two things: he's not that great because again, is well, he, yeah, he's all. Uh, if it weren't for Mantle fucking up, we literally wouldn't have the conflict that we do going into these last two episodes. So that's the thing, because again, he was going to get all like wiped away with like emotion, but he get on the rocks and like sleeping in his office, he completely forgot about it. Uh, but two, the other thing too is again, just Mantle doesn't stick his ground. He always like you know, let Zeckelman win. <laughs> we let Zeckelman win. And- arguably, maybe the worst quality that you could possibly have as a lawyer. Well, yeah. <laughs> so what take you where do you come out? Do you think do you think fire and uh, mantle good idea or not? Well like I said, I it's a reckless idea. I, I don't know, honestly, like I can't I can't see Larry like finding a better lawyer in time. That's the thing. Like maybe if he had more time then it would be fine, but I, I don't know. I feel like he's putting himself into a very precarious situation by just not having a lawyer at all, you know? You know who he needs to hire? A, a certain, he, a certain he, lawyer that we love? Well, no, more specifically, he's got <laughs> he's got to call Porno Gill. Oh my god. <laughs> porno Gill. What if we Gil. fucking bring back Odin Kirk and he's playing Porno Gill, but Porno Gill has turned his life around and is now a lawyer? Wouldn't Dear that be god. fucking... I oh god! I, would I want that so myself. bad. I yes. want that so bad. I want to fucking will that into existence. <laughs> Be the coolest thing ever. Okay, and picture this. Picture this. Larry fucks up the trial specifically because he keeps referencing Gil's past. Yep. <laughs> he mentions it on the stand and asks right, right. follow questions. What do you mean about your lawyer? What did he do with the Tabasco sauce? Oh my god! Oh. Will it into existence, HBO, please? <laughs> you have Odenkirk right there from the, the top of your show. He's right there for the picking. I, I would say Odenkirk is probably the first, like, super memorable guest star. Yeah. I mean, you have people like Ted and Mary Steve Virgin, but they obviously came back as reoccurring characters. I'm saying Odenkirk is, like, the first, like, really major, like, one and done guest star. Yeah. All right. Anyways. Okay. So uh, he fires Mantle anyway. So he went there and he's he a good rapport with the valet saying, hey, toss okay? Tosses it to him. And again, like kind of flaunting in front of Victor's face too, which is like, hey, this is how it should go. You ask him to toss okay? You do the toss. No harm, no foul. And he, usually, he, plug, he plugs his electric car into the charging station. Then he leaves. So then he comes back and Victor... Unpl- he pulled the plug again per the whole gag. Of, now, know, this pull. is unacceptable, I think. This is just, like, it's funny. Like, I like the payoff to it, but just, you know, and I feel like the way we have been approaching these podcasts is to just kind of, like, great, like, is, like, where are we coming down? Is this, is Larry at fault or not? And I think in this situation, this dude totally should have fucking kept to himself. I mean, this is incredibly unprofessional behavior right here. Yeah, Victor really should be fired, man. He really should, yeah. In this I mean, Victor, yeah. He went it's not even like a thing of like he could have done something, but he just opted not to. It's like if he went out of his way to slight Larry David there, he unplugged his car. But we have a setup, Dragon. What's the setup? Why does Larry need to use his car? So basically, uh, when he and, uh, he and Jeff uh, got you know basically transferred the power of attorney from Susie to uh, to, to Larry, they didn't want to find out about it. The lawyer, <laughs> they slayed him with the pen, basically like texted, "Oh yeah, we've sent the either we've sent the finalized paperwork to to your house or we've emailed it to you or something." It was like I, I, it was emailed or like the papers were sent. To no, it was I, I think it was being like directly like directly hand delivered to the house yeah. i think that's why it was so urgent because it wasn't even like it was coming in the mail it was like the guy was directly on his way with it yeah the papers are being delivered uh-huh so that, that there's the freak out there where larry's not panicking. And i gotta that's tell not... you man this is this might be one of the most genuinely suspenseful <laughs> things i've ever seen in this show god because my, I was with Larry Dragon. I have had moments like this where it just seems like everything is fucking going wrong at the same time. Mm. I mean, the, the anxiety here is just palatable. Just palatable. Oh, I, you, know, you know where I've specifically been, Dragon, the moment that was the most relatable to me? 
when what? he's yelling at Jeff to pick up the phone, just desperately, like, come on, pick up the phone, pick up the phone, come on! Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, why is it that when you're in an emergency, the person that you need to get a hold of never picks up the phone? <laughs> yep. Yeah, one of these days, I mean, to be fair, it's, it's suspenseful for a different reason, but it's like very, it's well directed suspense, the doll. The way the doll ends has this really great, I won't tell you what, what happens, but the end of the doll episode has this beautifully directed like thing where you can feel the tension, you feel uh-huh. the flight or, there's a flight or fight moment that happens, and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so point is Larry David's in a hurry to get it home, but he's only got so much charge in the cards. It's like low battery warning. It's like the worst night. This, this, this here's, here's the downfall. And it's also a little bit of Larry David versus the, the modern technology of the day where it's like, we have the electric car. It's nice. You know, you have like a little charging station, you know, what, what, what where's the harm there? But it, it's just the fact that folks, at the end of the day, it's a cell phone on wheels. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At the end <laughs> of the day. So because of that, you know, Larry, he's, he's, he's out of dodge. He, he conveniently or inconveniently, he, he breaks down right outside Conan O'Brien's house. Oh, man. <laughs> I love Conan's just... I, first of all, I love that Conan is, of all things, just gearing up to do a little jamming on his guitar. I love it. He's got, like... The, 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 Conan kind of brought this on himself. He's got, like, a big old window in his house. That <laughs> really <gets awful. laughs> No curtains or anything, just big old window. Right, right. <laughs> so like, oh, no, no, I don't know, Claire, there's an emergency, I need your help. So how do you read Conan actually? Like, do you think that Conan is just being a good Samaritan? Do you think he genuinely wants to help? Do you think he's like, do you think he's just kind of like the, the type of guy where it's almost like impossible for him to say no in this situation, even though he doesn't want to? How do you I read think it? I think it's twofold. I think primarily it's the fact they did have that spark despite the lack of class. Uh, uh, I think it's Conan kind of Conan wants to break the rules for Larry, but you know it's just kind of it's kind of hard for him too. So he's kind of finding I mean, a middle. Just the fact that Larry's like going up to him again, literally entering his property. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: Conan, even if he is like playing a version of himself, Conan on some level has to think this is cosmically funny, and he kind of has to do something here. You know what? That's true. I mean, Conan O'Brien does have a really, really good sense of humor about shit like this, so I can totally see. It has that. to be sort of like a thing where like, real life Conan would be like, "You can't make this stuff. I have to help this guy." <laughs> right, so I right. think half of it is, is, I think half of it is sort of like he he likes Larry and he wants to break the rules for him, and the other half is probably a thing of like, "Well, I mean, what, what am I going to be like?" Like the guy said no to an emergency. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And to be fair, Conan's going out as well. I'll let you drive my car. Like that's that's pretty big of Conan. You know, he's not it gonna is, drive him. Yeah. Like, just take my car. But again, here's the if we go with something on your glasses, like, oh, the timing here. He's just like, there's something on your glasses. So Larry's blind, and in this moment, the, the keys get tossed right in his eye. <laughs> oh, my oh my god, such a good tough. payoff. Such a good payoff. <laughs> Yep, it's fine. But then, <laughs> even better payoff. Yeah, so Larry, uh, when he was driving the Mercedes, he, he stopped by to replace the cheese that was eaten and thrown away. Uh-huh. So, but you know, he put it in the back seat of the car. <laughs> <laughs> then Richard Lewis dr- drove off with the car for his big date. And uh, so Larry's in, in his kitchen, you know, like, well, I'm sorry, the bigger, sorry, I, I've jumped to different payoffs there. But yeah, so um, Larry just got like, an eye patch, signing the document. Then Jeff has also has an eye patch. <laughs> I love how it's like the show is so upfront about, like, yep. Domestic violence, folks. <laughs> I mean, again, he lives in fear of this woman. Just right. <laughs> and then we see, you know, she's she's signing. It. We're done here. Okay, he's like, yes, I'm, I'm, I get to pull the plug on that that, that fat f. <laughs> and you got to think that this is what if they actually kill off Jeff in the finale? Wouldn't that be fucking wild? I mean, Tiki, there's only two episodes left. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and this season's like, continuing. We don't know. Like, this is kind of new territory for Curb as far as like it, it's the last one. It's like we don't know what the fuck they're gonna pull. I mean, here's the thing. Okay, two things to bear in mind. One, this season has continued things more than the past seasons have. I'm not saying we don't have runners through the season. No, but you're right. It do, it does feel like everything is kind of tying back around. Every little thing that gets 
brought up in this season is kind of coming back, except Maria Sophia. I was totally wrong about that. <laughs> the is, yeah, I want to be very clear here. It's not that like in the past seasons of Curb, we haven't had like a running through line right, or something, right, but we yeah. haven't had like a direct like day to day sort of thing where, for example, like Jeff is having a procedure and we would either see the end of that procedure in the episode or we just wouldn't talk where we submit like later. Oh, yeah. Have it, I, mean, I think a good time. example of what you're getting at is like the Mocha Joe season, like every episode probably has like something to do with Larry building the. You yeah, know, he's the getting the beans. Larry thing. Yeah, he but the beans. there's still a lot of other stuff going on on the side. A lot of that other stuff is, like you said, pretty episodic. But again, like just the opening of the season, episode one ends him getting arrested. Episode two, he's in the holding. So we've never done that before. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So with that in mind, it's like, well, I mean, again, if Jeff is like, which by the way, I do think they cheated that one time this season with when he got arrested for the uh, for the spray cans. Yeah, no, you're we right. Did yada yada over that. We did not we did. get. But that's what I'm saying. That's that's ordinarily what they do. That was right, right, yeah. What they do. Okay, so the other I mean, thing, wouldn't it be amazing if that came back up in the trial? I think it will. I think it will too. <laughs> okay, so the other thing, the other thing to bear in mind. Oh God, I just, I just realized something. I didn't think about this. What? In the trial, in theory, they could try connecting dots, so they could say Larry David defaced his own painting. At, oh my at, God! <laughs> at the gallery. Oh Mr. my David, God! Mr. David, the thing about this, they're all sexual. Think about yeah, it. Like thing yeah. Like, did you did you spray paint phalluses all over uh over this this woman who uh who dumped you? Uh -huh. Because you mocked her alopecia. Oh man! Oh, that and, and, incredible. And uh, Mr. David, uh, this 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 uh, lovely uh, tribute to the uh, Jewish comedians. Did 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 you did you spray paint? Did you deface it by painting and or spray painting? <laughs> <laughs> You're self giving conolingus to an African American woman. <laughs> God. This is well, you're on it. <laughs> oh, God. All right. So let's see. Uh, where was I? Uh, oh, wait, the other thing to bear in mind, too, is that again, Susan Ross, you know, Seinfeld, we, there was a major character death at the end of that season. True, true. Again, that was a thing you also got a lot of flack over, too, by the way. It wasn't like Seinfeld finale, but some people either upset or... Really and honestly, I don't think this is the first time that Jeff's health issues have come up this season, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, I mean, Jeff in the past, he's you know he's gone in there for a couple things. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm thinking of, like, uh, you saw it in season six. You know, Jeff, uh, you know, he had, like, the, he got his head shaved by accident. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, 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 yeah. He was, he was going down there for something. He didn't need, like, his head shaved at all. <laughs> it wasn't brain uh -huh. surgery, but, you know. Okay, anyway, so back to the cheese. So, uh, you know, Larry David, he's, he's looking for the cheese. Uh, importantly, though, again, he's probably going to show up at least once in the finale. But, let's say, again, we, there is a, there's a large element of finality in these Richard Lewis appearances. And, again, I have to wonder how much of this is Larry David just knowing his friend's not in great shape, making the moments count that he does have with him in these, in these scenes, the scenes they wrote for Richard Lewis. Well, you know what I mean, that he outlined for Richard Lewis that they then improvised. Yeah. Just the whole thing of like, if there's getting back, the rhythms feel really good here. It feels like classic, you know, Larry David, Richard Lewis sort of sort of stuff here, where he's like, again, he's like calling in the question, like, you're all, you at your advanced age, you think, you know, you're, you're going to meet the one. You're still using the term the one, just like mocking, like, again, it's like his last scene put in quotes is, you know, he's, he's like insulting, you know, Richard Lewis's love life, which again, it's kind I, of, I really don't think it's going to be his love. Like I no, said, I, I know it's not. I'm just saying up. that. In the finale, I just yeah. like that all the scenes they've had have had an aspect like a cloud of finality over them. Right, right, sure, sure. You could look. I could be reading into it though. You're not wrong. Maybe I'm reading into it, but it, it's just it's just the fact that again, it's like we're bringing it back to the beginning of Curb, even just you know like a final season kind of way. It's the fact that for what's the first thing they do, Larry David Lee Hall by sundown, by sundown. <laughs> what are you? What is this a western? Uh huh. Anyway. So uh, Richard Lewis picks up his date that he's head over heels for. Uh, Larry David cannot find his cheese. And he has that smile realizing what's happened. Like, okay, Richard Lewis's date's going to be ruined. This is going to be funny. Oh, man. <laughs> the date gets in the car. And, uh, she, again, the cheese has been, like, in the L.A. sun probably for, yeah, for a whole day. Yeah, just baking. Just baking. Yeah, and Richard that, Lewis can't smell it at all. The best <laughs> part is Richard Lewis can't smell any of this at all. Except at the end, I do think he's starting to get his set his sense of smell back at the very end. I didn't end. read it that way. I, I, think he's, very end. I didn't read it that way. I think he's trying to smell it for dear life and he can't. Okay, okay. That's fair. That's how I read it. I could you, you, maybe he's getting he says he's been making improvements. I think he's just lying to Larry trying to get sympathy for the little smell discount. 
Fair enough. By the way, I do really like the whole thing of like, yeah, there's a surgery. It's in Switzerland. I don't know if I'm going to go. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, so then, uh, you know, this thing, oh, this car effing stays and she just leaves. And she just did, like, bounces just immediately. Like, nope. Like, where are you uh, going? To quote Sonic the Hedgehog, this is no good. No good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that is the episode. And, yeah, honestly, I, I do think that, like, like I said, the, the actual, like, uh, colostomy, colostomy bag is, you know, it's like you said, it's a horrifying concept to think about. Maybe not the best title of the episode, considering I feel like the key toss was maybe a little bit more emphasized throughout the episode. That's still damn good. I, I definitely think that we're we're firing on all cylinders here going into the finale. Okay, here's a title they never would have gone with because they don't they don't really title them like this. But imagine this, okay? Key toss. She's lost. <laughs> I mean, at least they don't title their episodes the way that Friends titles their episodes. Right. <laughs> all right. Any final thoughts? However, both do begin with the sign. All the Seinfeld That's true. episodes. That's true. All, all but one of the Seinfeld episodes have the in the title. Uh-huh. And uh, all the Friends titles have the in it. Yes. The one where... Yeah. But that, that, that was always one of the most annoying things about Friends to me. Low really? I got be honest. It was kind of like an honesty and advertising sort of thing I appreciate. Where, okay, it's just, well, that's the one where that happens. <laughs> right, right. Okay. I, maybe it's because I first got really into Friends on DVD, so like I, I knew the titles pretty explicitly. Yep. That might have something to do with it. Anyways. Hmm. All right, well, that's it. We want to thank our uh, folks for tuning in here. Yeah, thanks to Co Gios and uh, Little Blue. I'm going to read his comment really quick. He says, uh, I've been here, but I want to say this. Isn't it annoying uh, when you have vehicles and sirens passing by? It can be annoying. It is to me when I'm trying to record videos. Dragon, I'm yep. sure you know a thing or two about that. Yes, I do, Little Blue. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, it's more so like I, I'm actually like I live on a hill, so I don't have to really worry about passing traffic all that much but when the when the light hits that hill just right tiki oh you hear singing <laughs> <laughs> yes well i what i do have to worry about is like my walls are very thin and there's multiple other people in my house so it's like if someone's having a conversation that's when i worry about like sound interference all right so yeah uh kogias also shouts out that bob Odenkirk was in an episode of seinfeld which i'm not surprised I he, do was, he, he uh, it was he he that's actually a funny episode he was uh Elaine was dating a medical student who wasn't a doctor yet, but he was going to be a doctor. It was like the thing of like, she, she, you know, she just wanted to be a doctor so much. And like a guy like keels over in the restaurant practically. Oh, he's like, is there a doctor? And he's like, yeah, it's just like, well, he, uh, he barely raises his hand. It's like, you know, elevate your legs. <laughs> it's not going over there. All. Just like, oh, that's funny. Okay. All right. So we're out of here, guys. See y'all later. Have a good one. Oh, wait, hold on. Little Blue's saying you're making me say this, Dragon. I'll wait a little while. Little Blue's typing something else out. Um, Little Blue, you got like one minute. Oh, the hills are alive. All right. With the sound of Pacha. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>